Guru Nation, welcome to episode 320 of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. This is Dan Sfera. I'm here with uh, world famous CRC Academy <laughs> instructor Monica Paola Cuitiva, who's soon going to have a Spanish podcast for clinical research professionals and for patients, right? What are you doing? Yes. Which one are you focusing on? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, because there is no content in either. Yeah, so, so that's going to be amazing. I will be a guest on her show speaking only Spanish, yes. 100%. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn it well, like to be fluent. You, you want to improve it. You already yeah. didn't know. I uh, know. I speak like a what? Like a kindergarten level? No, but I know. First grade level. I have hear you. No, but you, you're going to be. I will it just take a little tweaking and we do it. Mm -hmm. But today's luckily for you guys all in English. And uh, we will talk about owning a site, okay? We're going to talk about, like, these things on the board and, uh, like, what it takes to run a site, what it takes to, uh, like, how you train new employees and uh, the, all those kind of things because we don't talk about it enough. So, Monica, when whenever there's a new staff member, you've trained a lot of people now. Yeah. Right? Many people. How, and how many and, have you and, trained? And, 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 and everybody's successful. I'm pretty, That's right. I'm actually very proud of saying that because, yeah. So, you're, uh, we're talking about people that started with no knowledge of research. Naive. Completely naive. And then you train them. Mm -hmm. I used to do this as well in the past, but uh, like you do it now and you do it well. So what do you do? Like, what's the first thing you do with, let's say, day one? Like, for example, Jackie came. She interned with us. Yes. We did a video with her. Mm -hmm. And now she's working with a university. Like yeah. The, uh, this is university crazy. University on um, Col Colorado. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, how, for example, Jackie, and you've done others, but let's go with her. Like, what did you do when she first started? So normally what I like to do, I, I like to start by t uh, um, telling them and explaining them or to get familiarized with all the acronyms because that's the first thing that we come across with. I remember the first time I spoke to a CRA and uh, he was talking to me all in acronyms and I, I was just like, I, I felt that I was like talking in different language yeah. or a language that I didn't really know. So... So I guess that's probably the first thing I but start. But what do you do? You actually teach them? Like yeah. Like one by one? You do yeah, it? You don't I give them anything them. to read? Yeah, yeah well. This was I before have, our book. I actually now have we have a, a book. Yeah, yeah. I actually have um like a, a list oh, okay. of acronyms. Okay. that The main ones that you use. Oh, yeah. We use that in CRC Academy. Yes, we use them. Okay. So that's like how long it takes them to learn the acronyms. Like a week, a well, day? Yeah, that's, I mean... Obviously, in, in research, there are so many that <laughs> sometimes it's overwhelming. But uh, with the most popular ones or the, the ones that you use the most, yeah, like in, in, in one way, I and guess. And this is simultaneously while, while you are being a coordinator at yeah. the site. Because mm -hmm. people are going to listen right now and they're, they want to learn. Like, how did you do this, Monica? Because being a coordinator is busy. How do you have time to even start with somebody who doesn't know I anything? Just share, just by ask them to share with me, and then when I do, the thing is, when you teach someone, you learn two two times, so it makes you improve and maybe find different ways to do things that are mm, more. Um, I say save you more time or I don't know. So you let them shadow you on a visit? Yes. And uh, not just the visit, but everything I do. Everything. Like I even show them how I organize my emails because I like to organize. I do everything color coding. Um, wow. And then um, on my emails and then I show them. You need to show like, me this. Whatever I do <laughs> in uh, during the day, I will just show them what I'm doing. So like... I mean, and I like the company, and I like teaching. I never knew I liked teaching until I met you. Really? Because I, before, I, so I didn't have the uh, uh, patience to do it until I started doing it. That's interesting. It was as part of my job, and now I, I really like and it. now you're I, the I CRC Academy instructor. <laughs> doing that. I like teaching on video and on audio. I don't like teaching one-on-one. -on -one. 
Um, unless there are interns, then I do, I do it. But usually Chris does most of that, and then I do like just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's why you're the CRC mm -hmm. Academy instructor. I enjoy both. One-on-one -on -one yeah. and then uh, online. It's just, I mean, it's like I say, it just it brings me joy. Yeah. So. I think I'm too hyper to be a good teacher. It's more for like videos and audio. Mm. To sit down with somebody, it takes time. Unless they're actually helping me. Like with the, Judith has been shadowing me. And she's going to come Friday. But she's been shadowing me for uh, CRA visits. And so I actually have her do like my reports with me. And so that I can do because it's not really teaching. I'm working, but that's her. exactly how I do. And, and okay. I'm working, but I'm while I'm working, I'm teaching someone how to do it. I see. So that's the training aspect. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna break this down from this board, which nobody can see, only you. Okay, but see, like training your coordinator, right? So what what point do you bring the SOPs? What point do you train them with? Oh, SOPs? that's actually the first thing. Before the Be acronyms. Before, I mean, no, I mean, I, I start with the acronyms and that stuff, but that's one of the, th that if I'm going to concentrate in one topic, that will be the first one, because it's very important for sites to make sure the the study coordinator follow is following the SOPs, um, okay. unless you want to have trouble with <laughs> Uh, in the future with a um, uh, audit or anything you need to make sure every single person in your staff yeah. know the SOPs because one little mistake can make a huge problem the exact SOPs yeah and then there's of course because the SOPs are meant to be audited you know or they're open to being audited by the FDA so most sites don't make them very detailed so what I've done in the past is have like an employee manual that we don't show auditors in addition to the SOP. So that's more detailed. Mm. Like uh, everything, how to schedule Uber, you know, when to do uh, it. Like, um, like, um, um. like employee manual, mm. you know, and th that became our SOP. But before the, because I wrote most of that, now Chris helped with a lot of it. Now it's old, and we revised it. But when it was like years ago, it was a, it used to be an employee manual, so it was much more detailed than what it is now. We took out a lot of stuff. Remember when we got audited and the monitor told us take yeah. out some stuff? Mm -hmm. So we started changing it over time. So it went from something very detailed to something that's good, broad. but it's yeah. Mm -hmm. But you still want to train the staff like on your own yeah because there are things that you don't want to i mean everything <laughs> yeah you don't want to be open you to you don't want to compromise being audited yeah. that shouldn't be a part of your sop so that's what we do okay so training you know have them shadow you okay the next thing that you do well um is well actually patient recruitment okay Pati i teach the students from a to c so i so and in the CRC Academy, everything, you teach them too. they will exactly they will know exactly what to do in every single situation, because if we prepare them well enough, they will be able to even own a site and run it without mm -hmm. no problem, because they will know how to uh, negotiate the budget, uh, how to uh, get patients, the, uh, how to uh, get studies, and how to run the study. And how to manage your PIs exactly because our PI likes you very much but so he responds to you and you have a good way of working with them as opposed to other yeah, people well, so you have is. to train this for others yeah i mean because doctors sometimes the, are not easy to deal with uh, you need to grow a thick skin in this industry because every, you have to deal with lots of uh, ego <laughs> yeah. with everybody in yeah. different aspects in different levels and um but the thing is, I mean, as long as you have, have you learned to have good relationships with people and respect their space and respect yourself too, I guess, um, it's a, it, uh, that's a good uh, tip that I will give everybody. Yeah. It's important. It's number one thing to have good relationships. And I guess that works in every single industry, but especially here because like all the ego stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, so the next thing for site owners, and remember, this is for the site director, site owners, especially for smaller to medium-sized sites, but it can work. These same concepts can work at universities. It's just if you have a, your own department that you manage. Yeah. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they need to find a PI. Okay, well, you already have a PI in, in, in your site. Then you, your job becomes to keep that PI happy and then to work with new PIs. Like we're always trying to bring new PIs here, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to go on LinkedIn. You've got to go door knock. You know, there's a guy upstairs we got to follow up with. There's a lady that's joined us now. There's nurse practitioners. So we always got to find PIs and sub eyes. Linking, sending messages. And then find a way to keep them happy, right? That's the hardest part. But I guess that's all, that's all just in the relationship, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I try to speak with, uh, with them no, I mean, as often as possible, keep them up to date. And I don't like to overwhelm them with information that is not necessary. See, a lot like, of people for like don't know that and they just give them anything they need. Like, hey, this is what the sponsor is asking. So if you can solve problems for the PI without them getting involved, they're much happier. Yeah, remember that they are doctors and they're extremely busy. Most of yeah. the time, it's not just yeah. your site, unless this person is devoted to your site. Yeah. And and even then, they don't want to be uh, too overwhelmed with everything. Yeah. That's why you have to have a really good trained CRC. So that way, uh, the CRC can take care of things that yeah. doesn't need to be taken care of by the doctor. Oh, yeah. And that's you've mm -hmm. done with Kobe now, who's going to become... Yeah. CRC and a rater here. Yeah. So you'd mm -hmm. be more of a director and start doing like biz dev, which we're going to get into now. But site director, site owners have like four people they need to keep happy. It's their staff, their PIs, mm -hmm. um, so their coordinators and the other staff, then their doctors or clinicians, so PI, sub I, then the patients, and then the sponsors, yeah. which means monitors also. Those mm -hmm. four people, those are the only four stakeholders you need to care about as a site owner. Yeah. And your job is to keep them all happy. Mm -hmm. It sounds very easy. It's it, almost yeah, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been working for us, but as, uh, because we're having, like I say many times, good relationship with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we take good care of our patients. We don't treat yeah. them like numbers. We just So that's uh, the next thing actually, patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, you know, right now you're going somewhere today, right? Okay, yes. Give an so, example. This is just a random day. Okay, you're so doing then outings, uh, because right? we're, we work with mental health. So what I do is I look for events. Mm -hmm. We look for, uh, as I mentioned this in the past, for uh, for uh, sites in the, not sites, like pages in the in uh, Facebook to oh, be part of. Oh, yes. Uh, let's talk about we, that first. We do videos. Let's we, follow up with that. So how's that going? The live streams? That's good. That's so what good. do you do exactly? So, live streams in the Craigslist yeah. local groups on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And then I share, or I can do videos and then I share them like, like I'm doing it <laughs> like a live stream and I put it in different, um, pages like uh, in Spanish, English, we look everywhere. All on Facebook? All in Facebook. So people are asking me to follow up with you on how that go how that went. Yeah, that actually is going well because I get messages from people. That's how we get been getting um, mostly patients right now. Okay, so maybe someone just didn't hear that last episode just listen now or is watching now. What are you doing in like 2 minutes? What do you what can they do right so now that do, you're doing? We do videos educating people about research. And we do it in English and in Spanish. And then what we do is we share this in uh, in pages in uh, in Facebook that are uh, that are related to my topic. Like for example, um, if I'm looking for patients with Alzheimer's, I just post this in in a, uh, some Alzheimer's. So you're uh, doing like pages. a watch party? Yeah, that's exactly what we do. And then live also, uh, or just yeah, separate? Yeah, we do both. Mm -hmm. Both. Mm -hmm. So you do both. You yeah. go live when you feel like yeah. it, and then mm -hmm. you do a pre-recorded video yeah. and do a watch party exactly. in all these groups. And then we local invite community the, yeah. groups, right? Yes. And then we invite people to events. We tell them about wow. other things that are happening. You're gonna do a video today, like right? Today, 
like You're today, doing videos. Yes, today we're Very going nice. to Nam with uh, it's an event, Nami event. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty much to That's network good. with patients. Do you and think with, um, uh, I can get a sample of this video so that I can yeah. show people like, sure. hey, this is yeah. an example. I'm going to clip this last minute that we talked yeah. mm -hmm. as an intro. Like, yeah. look what mm -hmm. Monica did at this event. Yeah. And not only was she there in person, which you need to do, yeah. but she recorded it. Yes. Okay, you can have an intern follow you with a camera. And it's a GoPro. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be big. Yeah, right? we actually have a brand new 360 GoPro that we're so going please, to be testing today. Please, please send <laughs> me that footage. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I will send you a Dropbox link to put it yeah. up. And uh, and uh, so we're doing this event. I'll send it to you. But like I was still like I was saying, establishing good relationships. Yeah. So this event is also to uh, uh, to help other people uh, like with mental health conditions. Yeah. That are in need, and we're going to be doing some donations, some material, mm -hmm. so that shows also that you have good uh, like you're putting your good deed there. And yeah. uh, and uh, not just always trying to get get get, but you're right. giving you're also doing stuff. Yeah. This is important. We need to make this like a mini video, which we will do. Sites that are I know many sites around here. They go to like these fairs all the time, community events. You should. That's very mm -hmm. important. But why not also have somebody with a camera, like a GoPro, yeah. follow you around, mm -hmm. do like a vlog of the key moments. Okay, and then do a watch party on Facebook later. Yes. And post it to all the groups like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Because then you going to that event was important, but now it lives on forever. Exactly, and the right? people are going to see that you're not just uh, trying to get them to be part of the study, but you're giving to the community too. That's right. So it builds like kind of rapport. And so you guys start are doing this today. You. Yes. Okay. So we're doing that today. We're what time is this? Is this is a uh, at six? Okay. Six p.m. Uh, but then I have to we interview have to Dr. Hazen everything. on Skype. Otherwise, yeah. I would go. Yeah. But I want to see the footage. Yeah. We got to make a We're video of this. Do, yeah, we will. Wow, we will do, make, that's make like a, a separate. That's very yeah. good strategy. Okay, so basically, for patient-facing stuff. Yes. Go out in the community, record those things mm -hmm. because you're gonna be there anyways. Have somebody record yeah. it. Repurpose that content for Facebook exactly. watch parties. Yes. Instagram. And then you find the best parts of it and run an ad with that. Exactly. Okay. Okay. That's really so good for patients. So we're using that material. So and that's then... a way to get patients without even dealing with doctors. We talk about yeah. the easiest this way to get extra. patients <laughs> is to go through your doctor's database. But this is yeah. something extra when people mm -hmm. say, okay, Dan, that's great. But what else? So now, thanks to you, we discover this new thing that is working yeah and it's working yeah it's quite amazing good. i like it, i like it a lot because it, it the community always somebody will make comments wow. and then and then i was it's because i was watching some videos and i and i started seeing like this party um watch, watch party. party in yeah. facebook and i started seeing that they are they were getting so many views and i was just like but this is not even interesting or has yeah, nothing yeah. like to you know and then i say well if that people can't do it we can do it and plus you're bringing so is is some value like research his values like wow. you're offering people some kind of um i mean wow. uh, i i don't want to call it treatment but some kind of opportunity alternative to at least, to, yeah uh, alternative. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and and we're not when you're doing this you're not talking about specific studies no you're just going no. in general in general global yes. clinical trials we yeah. do these kind of yeah. studies yeah of course this way you don't need mm -hmm. irb approval because exactly. you're just promoting yourself mm -hmm. and plus the other thing i like the my number one thing is educating people about research because when you educate people about it they just is is easier to get them interested in participating. Wow! So this is powerful. We're gonna take this and make a video for this. But I'm and then stay tuned, people, for the highlights of this event. Okay, we're gonna show you an example after Monica's done with this event. Um, she'll send me the files, and then I'll do a, I'll put it up like this week. Yeah. And then you know just show this is an example of what she's doing. This is an example of a video that she's going to now put on a watch party. 
Yes. And if somebody wants to follow you on Facebook, what do they follow? If they want to follow this, oh, uh, we have it. We have in the in the global clinical trials. Global clinical it, yeah. trials. So global go look trials. on Facebook. Global clinical trials. It's a page. It's a business in Costa Mesa. Yes, California. and we also put it in the CRC Academy for the students. Oh, we have a page for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The CRC Academy page, yeah. Wow. Okay, last one is keeping the sponsors happy. Okay, meaning the, obviously, keeping the series happy, too. Yeah. That's so part of training, I guess right? I guess the first thing is establishing, a, um, like, you, you, get, you have to get to know your uh, CRA, and uh, yeah. and um, uh, to begin with, they are part of your team, or you are part of their team, so you're working together for the same purpose. So don't see the CRs, the CRA as your enemy, <clears throat> mm -hmm. or someone that is trying to <laughs> to make you yeah. fail. Because Work at the end them. of the day, if they if if they don't do a good job, then you're you're going to look back to the, you know your site. Mm -hmm. So if you have them happy. Uh, you actually ensure that in the future they give you more studies too. Mm -hmm. So it's not just don't see the just the small picture, see the big picture. And then if you do well, yeah. they're going to give you more, more studies. More studies, right? exactly. So let's talk about getting studies. How do you get studies? I mean, now people know you that you're doing this, mm -hmm. so they sponsors ask you, Monica. Yeah. Send me sites, yes. you know, for these studies. So. How do you? How did you get to that point? Well, the same way, just establishing good relationships with them, and uh, and. Um, but did you use and I always ask gov? them. I, I ask. I do. I do both. So I ask my CRAs. I always even the the CRAs that I work in the past. Okay. That I'm not longer working. I keep. I send them a message once in a while, and ask them if they have any. Uh, any study or if they know about any study mm -hmm. in their company that uh, that they think it will be suitable for our clinic. Uh, and then um, also in uh, clinicaltrials.gov and um, just look what is there, what is available. Um, like on and then weekly what do you, basis. Like what, let's say you find something on clinicaltrials.gov that looks like it's a good study. What do you do? You try to find the contact, and then what's what do you write in the email? Like example. Okay, so I write in the email. I ex because I I send it for different sites. So what I say yeah. is that I have a group of doctors that have interest on this particular study. Okay. That we went through the um uh, uh, the uh, clinical trials that gov and you know give a uh, keep our attention, okay. and we have um like a, a patients that will be um, suitable, for, suitable for this study. And okay. that's pretty much the email I send. And how many of those that you send, what percentage respond? Well, that you have to be very patient. Yeah, because people because get frustrated. You can, send, you can send 100 and then just get three answers. That's good. But it's but it doesn't but it doesn't I mean sending an email it doesn't take you that long because I have a template pretty much. I just okay. uh, make some changes depending on the study. Yeah. And then um and then I will send it to each person. I personalize each study. I mean each uh, message. Okay. And then send it to them. Like for example, last week I sent twenty and I got three answers. I was surprised that it was uh, very That's a good, lot. But That's <laughs> really good. Yeah. So, okay. and um, and now I'm just sending the rest of the documentation. Okay. We, I sent like I guess a month ago an order, um, like I'm, uh, like I think like around twenty or. 25 studies applications too and now we're doing an SIB on December you see? You see? so it, is, um, it takes a little time because I guess in research everything is like it's slow yeah if once you get before you get the study once you get it, it gets yeah. super quick yeah. and then it's slow down again 
when it comes to payments yeah and, feast or famine and, and we're gonna stuff. get into yeah payments and contract and budget future podcasts yeah because that's a whole nother yeah aspect. but in in research you have to be very patient very persistent and don't get discouraged easily because i mean yeah. imagine um, the amount of emails that they receive too so what i do also is uh, besides sending the email and then you're fr- just forgetting about it i follow up two weeks after to the same people two weeks after two weeks i was doing okay. it on a weekly basis but i guess too that's much. a little bit yeah. too much so two weeks after two weeks is good so i tell people like two to four weeks Uh uh-huh i so i send them two weeks after and like i was saying i like to use color coding so i just put certain color to the ones that i already did a follow-up the second follow-up or the third follow-up everything with colors so that way i know uh, um, i don't overwhelm them very good but and i know what i'm doing that's very good so that's in a nutshell in 20 in about 26 minutes um what the four things that you need to focus on when you're a site director or a site owner those four things that's it that's it yeah so uh thank you Uh, of course there's more like contracts and budgets but we get into that too uh, later but uh thank you monica i know you gotta go thank you Uh, so make sure you record it yes and then we're gonna show guru nation what it's all about and how you do the Facebook watch party yeah. um, and, and what one of these events looks like. So mm-hmm. thank you very much, everybody, for listening, thank you. for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.